Hi guys. Um, I suppose you can hear me, yeah, even I can hear myself. Uh, good, so uh, my name is Stepan, and uh, today I want to tell you about the hardware wallets for Lightning Network. So I want to start with a question. Uh, who is running a mainnet Lightning node? Please raise your hands. Wow, there's a lot of reckless people in the audience. Uh, I have to admit, uh, I don't have one. I mean, I have a mainnet uh, app on my phone where I can send a few Satoshis to draw uh, a cat on the Satoshi place, and I have a testnet node, uh, but I'm really, really scared to run a mainnet lightning node. Uh, because uh, over the years in Bitcoin, we kind of became more and more paranoid, and normally what we do, uh, how we protect our funds, we use uh, crazy multi-signature schemes like 7 of 11, and uh, using the cold storage, air-gapped computers, uh, audio modem cables, we don't trust USB connections because uh, maybe uh, there will be a malware or something. So uh, at all costs, we try to protect our private keys and never put them on the online machine. Uh, and uh, Lightning, well, it is awesome, it is great, I think that it is a uh, revolution in the ecosystem and it will boost everything, but uh, how we operate the Lightning node? We need to put our funds on the online machine and uh, also we want to announce to the whole world that, hey guys, I have my funds here, I want to route and uh, collect fees, so, and here is my IP address, so please come and, you know, get it. Uh, so uh, that is basically the reason why I don't uh, run a mainnet node, because I just don't feel uh, that I will be capable of protecting my own server from that. Uh, and I was thinking about that for uh, a few months and uh, thought that it would be really nice to have a hardware wallet for the Lightning. Uh, like, uh, that would operate in such a way that, yeah, you still need to keep it uh, connected to your computer, but at least you can take all your secrets from your server, uh, move that to a separate device uh, that will do only one thing, managing the secrets and nothing else, uh, and uh, run the Lightning nodes uh, in such a way that uh, basically we can uh, decrease the attack surface by a lot just by uh, using a dedicated device for that. Um, and yeah, that is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, well, it's not there yet, so we don't have a hardware wallet for Lightning yet, but I know that uh, all the companies working on that, and uh, I think that we can uh, make it happen. But today I want to talk mostly about the architecture, because for Lightning, everything becomes a little bit more complicated, actually. Uh, so first, to remind what we need uh, for the hardware wallet uh, for the Bitcoin. Uh, well, there everything is pretty simple. We just need to prepare a transaction, an unsigned transaction, no matter how complicated it is, it can have multiple inputs, outputs, multi-signature, whatever. Uh, so we just put together all the data that we need, we pass it to the hardware device, the hardware uh, wallet should be able to parse it to display all the information that we are actually signing. Uh, what we supposed to sign, uh, and then just sign and send back to our online node and uh, broadcast. Uh, so basically a very simple uh, iterative process. Uh, all the data, sign, kind of prepare, sign, broadcast, nothing else. Uh, with receiving Bitcoins, everything is also pretty simple. So here you don't, uh, you just need to uh, make sure that the hardware wallet will be able to uh, control the private key of the corresponding address. So you generate an address on the uh, online host and uh, then on the hardware wallet you just uh, check that this address corresponds to, the, to your private key so it was not uh, replaced by someone. Uh, with the Lightning, uh, instead of uh, this architecture and instead of transaction as a core uh, thing, we uh, actually have channels. Uh, so basically in the Lightning, uh, I need to, uh, unfortunately, I need to spend some time reminding, reminding you how the Lightning works. Uh, because, well, 
uh, this defines what we need to pass to the hardware wallet. Uh, so in the Lightning, we have, uh, instead of the transaction, we have a channel as a main instance. And basically, uh, how the uh, Lightning uh, node operates, uh, we just open a channel, that is one transaction that uh, appears on chain. Uh, then uh, we can update the channel balance uh, many, many times, hundreds, thousand, whatever. And then eventually, at some point, we need to close the channel. Uh, and then we need, again, to uh, broadcast another transaction on-chain. So basically, uh, instead of uh, one on-chain transaction per actual transaction, we can have only uh, two transactions per channel and any amount of uh, channel updates there. Uh, so how exactly it works is the following. Let's say we want to open the channel to some other node. Uh, so we want to put, let's say, one Bitcoin into the channel and then start actually uh, sending money back and forth to the whole network. Uh, so what we do, we talk to this other node and say, hey, guys, so we want to open the channel with you. Uh, if you agree, please give me some kind of public key that we should uh, lock the funds to. So uh, he uh, is fine with that because, well, it doesn't cost anything to the uh, for the other node. Uh, and uh, we prepare, we get this public key and prepare the transaction that is uh, two of two multi-signatures. So basically we lock one uh, Bitcoin that we want to put into the channel uh, and um, we will be able to release it only if both of the parties uh, agree on that. The important thing here is that uh, if we just prepare this uh, two of two multi-signature transaction and broadcast it right away and the remote node will disappear, what will happen? Our funds will be forever locked. Right, so before uh, signing and broadcasting this funding transaction, uh, we actually first need to ask the remote node to get uh, the commitment transaction for it. So like, okay, I'm opening the channel with you. Uh, I'm putting one Bitcoin there. Uh, I will have, I want to get it back. So uh, let's uh, please sign this transaction where we put one Bitcoin to me and zero Bitcoins to you. Like a fair deal, you didn't do anything, so you don't get any money yet. Uh, so then when the other party actually signs this transaction, then we already can um, get our money back if the other party will disappear. Uh, so this is the commitment transaction and we uh, in return also give the mm, commitment transaction to the other party where we get Again, uh, one Bitcoin and zero to the other party. And now, uh, when we broadcast this transaction and it actually settles on the blockchain, uh, we know that our channel is open and we can start uh, updating these channel values. Uh, so, uh, how the channel updates work? Uh, we have these commitment transactions, so initially one Bitcoin to me, zero Bitcoin to the other party, and then uh, we can update these channel uh, balances uh, and get more and more commitment transactions, and every next pair of commitment transactions uh, has to cancel the previous ones, such that only the last state uh, of, the, um, of the channel can go uh, on chain. Uh, so uh, this is done by uh, using so-called revocation keys. Uh, so basically, uh, if you look at the structure of the transaction that we use here, uh, then the funding transaction is a normal uh, two of two multi-seq uh, that is locking everything for two public keys, mine and the other node. And then the commitment transaction is actually different for two other parties, uh, for, for two parties. So. Uh, for me, the commitment transaction looks like uh, there are two outputs. Uh, one output to another node, uh, that is a normal um, uh, pay to PubKey hash. Uh, and uh, my output is a little bit tricky. Uh, so if I broadcast this commitment transaction, so if I, uh, I already get it signed from the other party, so I can just sign it and broadcast, uh, what will happen? Before I can use my output, uh, I need to wait for a certain time. And in Lightning right now, it is, I think, uh, seven days that will be reduced to one day. So normally, in the normal operation, it is one day. Uh, and uh, this, uh, the other option how someone can spend this output is if he knows a certain secret and, uh, well, basically, the other party, if uh, it knows the secret, then it can 
grab all these funds and basically punish me. Uh, so the idea here is that if this commitment transaction corresponds to the latest state of the channel, uh, then if I broadcast it, I just need to wait for one day and get my funds. Uh, but if it is a previous state, uh, then uh, on every channel update, on every new pair of commitment transaction, uh, I give the revocation key to the other party, such that if I broadcast the previous commitment transaction, then I will be punished and I will lose all the money here. Uh, so this is this puzzle that is uh, shown here. Uh, and finally, there are two ways to close uh, the channel. So one is a mutual close, when uh, I just talk to another guy that's, uh, okay, let's close. Uh, I don't want to wait for one day. Uh, let's just do a normal two of two multi-signature transaction that will uh, spend our latest, mm, our Bitcoins according to the latest state of the channel. Uh, and we broadcast it to the blockchain and we instantly get our funds back uh, and we can use them. Uh, and another option is if one of the parties disappears, then we can just take the last commitment transaction that we have, sign it and broadcast, but then we need to wait for one day. Um, so this is roughly how it works. Uh, one extra thing is how we actually pay to the remote node that we are not directly connected to. So like if I, uh, I'm connected to, uh, let's say, Satoshi Place, but I want to pay to Bitrefuel, uh, then I can uh, use uh, multi-hop uh, transactions, uh, multi-hop payment to uh, actually reach the final node. Uh, so here everything is also pretty simple. We just ask the latest, the last node that we are paying to, uh, to generate a certain secret. Uh, then the hash of the secret uh, basically represents uh, the kind of puzzle. So basically we uh, offer to the node uh, along the route uh, that we will pay you a certain amount. Let's say we want to pay 100 Satoshi to this node, uh, and we are here, and this is the kind of uh, guy in the middle. So we can say, okay, I will pay 101 to you if you give me the hash, uh, if you give me the secret that hashes to this value. Uh, then this guy uh, talks already directly to the. Um, to the final node that uh, I will pay you 101. Uh, he gets the hash, uh, he tells the hash, uh, oh, sorry, not the hash, uh, he gets the pre-image, he sends the pre-image to me, so we know now uh, that if something happens, we can uh, all put that in the blockchain, but we don't want to do that. Instead, we just update the channels to the uh, new values. Uh, yeah, I think that's not very clear, but <laughs> let's keep it like this. Mm. Yeah, uh, so uh, going uh, a little bit more into the hardware wallets and uh, what the Lightning nodes, uh, what secrets does it contain. So the idea is, again, that we take all the secrets and move it uh, from the uh, Lightning nodes to the hardware device. The thing is that maybe we don't want to do it with all the secrets, because there are plenty of them. Uh, I mean, basically, in every Lightning implementation right now, uh, we use the root secret that then uh, is used to derive multiple secrets that are used for different purposes. Uh, for instance, one kind of branch of secrets uh, is the uh, on-chain keys. So basically, the private keys for our Bitcoin transactions, for funding uh, and closing transactions and uh, everything like that. Uh, and uh, this is basically just a, a HD hierarchical deterministic uh, wallet that is used for, uh, for everything. Uh, then there is another uh, kind of path uh, that derives all the secrets for the channel updates. Uh, so all these uh, revocation keys and uh, maybe it is also used for um, something else, but basically uh, as, uh, we use a certain secret for a particular channel. Uh, and then there is a third secret that is an old key. This is a kind of our identity to the world. So it is our uh, representation in the network uh, that corresponds to the node ID. So basically when you're connecting to the Lightning node, you are normally saying that, okay, uh, this is the public key and then this is the IP address. So the public key corresponds to this guy, to the node. Uh, 
Uh, so obviously, if you will want to uh, keep our funds safe, uh, we want to protect these guys and these guys. Yeah, and the, um, uh, the nice thing about all this derivation is uh, that uh, they're not connected to each other directly, right? So you can't start from here and then uh, derive the uh, secret on the other branch. So basically there we use uh, hashes and uh, hash uh, key derivation functions. Uh, so this means that we maybe want to keep this guy and this guy on the hardware wallet. Uh, but about this one, there could be use cases when we don't really care about it. Uh, so the node key, for instance, is used for communication, for uh, gossiping, uh, and for broadcasting the information about uh, channel uh, settings and uh, channel balances. Uh, so uh, this kind of stuff doesn't really touch our funds. Uh, and so maybe we can just keep it uh, on the node itself, and then uh, if we use these secrets to the hardware device, even with the hardware wallet completely disconnected from the uh, node, we will have a kind of lightning node in a watch-only mode that will still be able to connect to other nodes, uh, not like pay anything or route the payments, but at least talk to them and prescribe that I'm kind of alive, but not quite. Um, yeah. So uh, about uh, these secrets, and the problem right now is that the hardware wallets that currently exist, they can do only uh, very simple things, like uh, this is the transaction, I can sign it, I can display the information about that, uh, and that's it. Uh, for Lightning, we need a little bit more of that, and even if you uh, look at the very first part where we open the channel, uh, we can't just make the uh, transaction to a two, two multi-signature output. We also need to wait for the commitment transaction signed from the other node, right? So before uh, giving uh, the signed transaction, funding transaction to the, uh, to the host, we actually need to make sure that uh, we will be able to redeem these funds afterwards. Uh, and uh, uh, this is basically what we need to do, but this doesn't require any additional hardware or anything. So it just, uh, instead of one transaction, we need to parse two transactions. Um, with closing the channel, everything is simple. It is basically very similar to what we do right now with Bitcoin. Uh, with the unilateral close, even easier. Uh, but uh, the important thing everywhere here is that uh, the commitment transaction uh, should be stored somewhere and uh, maybe even in unsigned uh, state. So basically the problem is that uh, we use the hardware wallet in the assumption that our host is compromised, like that the hacker already logged in into our Lightning node and can do anything he wants. So the problem here is if he has access to all our uh, commitment transactions from, from the channel, what he can do, he can just broadcast the old state uh, and then he will get all the funds, well, not he will get all the funds, but we will be punished, right? Uh, so storing the commitment transaction on the host uh, when it is already signed by the both parties is a terrible idea. Uh, instead, what you want to do, you can still uh, store the commitment transactions on the host, uh, and uh, when you want to actually close the channel, then you uh, sign it uh, with the hardware wallet and then broadcast. Uh, but the problem here it can be that if someone deletes this commitment transaction, uh, then we are stuck with the forever open channel and the only way to close it is actually to ask the other node to close it. Uh, so I believe that um, for hardware wallets for Lightning, we need not only uh, current functionality, but we also need additional storage. Uh, because we need to uh, store the latest commitment transaction per channel, at least. Uh, and also we need to, uh, well, it can be pretty large because number of channels that we will be opening probably pretty large. So it can be not in the secure storage, but at least as D card pack. Luckily, uh, both Trezor and Ledger, I think, now has uh, the SD card slot, at least some of them have, and uh, it's not like uh, super hard to, uh, to add these features. Uh, one thing that uh, 
I want to uh, talk about uh, about the node key uh, is uh, actually the invoice. I think this one. Yes. So uh, as I said, maybe we want to keep the node key that uh, represents our uh, node in the network uh, away from the hardware wallet, just on the node. Uh, the problem here is that this node is uh, node key is used to generate invoices. Uh, so basically, if you want, uh, if you are a merchant and you want to uh, uh, provide the servers uh, and accept payments on Lightning, you need to generate invoices. Uh, and if you are generating invoices on the on the server, uh, not on the hardware wallet, then uh, if this node key will leak, then basically an attacker can uh, generate invoices. So the question is, do you want to do that or not? Uh, and another uh, important thing that can happen if uh, you, so for the payment, every, every invoice, every Lightning payment has a uh, hash of the pre-image. And the pre-image is basically a proof of the payment. Uh, so uh, these pre-images also should be generated um, probably on the hardware device. Because if they are generated on your node and your node is hacked, or you don't have a very good uh, random number generator, uh, then uh, you can get the attacker uh, in the middle uh, that will just uh, stop uh, following the HTOC because he already can uh, generate the pre-image for that uh, and get all the money here. Uh, so um, I would say that uh, storing the node ID on the host uh, may work if you want to run your Lightning node as a um, routing node. So basically only collect the fees for the multi hops uh, But uh, if you are actually a merchant, then you probably want to store it on the hardware wallet also. Uh, and now the pretty hard part that uh, makes a hardware wallet for Lightning very complicated uh, is the actual routing. Uh, so if we are here, we want to put, let's say, a few bitcoins in the network such that we can um, route the payments and collect the fees, but we don't want to lose them. Uh, and obviously, it is a very sweet honeypot, so everyone wants to get this money. Uh, and I am assuming that maybe uh, we will get our server already uh, broken and uh, completely under control from the attacker. Uh, so uh, if everything is still fine, uh, how the um, routing happens, actually? Uh, so this guy wants to transfer some money from uh, his, uh, from this channel, well, basically transfer some money from here to here. Uh, so what we get, uh, he asks our node uh, basically for this HTOC offer. So um, I didn't say about that yet, right? Uh, the offer uh, basically said that if you know the pre-image, if you know the secret, uh, and when it is hashed, uh, it will get this value, then I will pay you a certain amount. Uh, and I know that that guys afterwards definitely know the secret. So you can ask them, and maybe they will tell you, and so you can collect some fees. Uh, so we get this offer. Uh, this offer happens uh, ex actually inside the commitment transaction as another output. Well, detail, technical details may be not that important. Uh, and then uh, we just talk to another guy and offer him uh, the value that is slightly smaller. Uh, so we collect some fees. And ideally, all this happens without uh, any user interaction at all. So it will be pretty stupid if you need to stay uh, close to your hardware wallet and on every uh, multi-hop opening, uh, kind of click uh, confirm, confirm, confirm. Uh, so uh, instead, uh, there should be rules in the hardware wallet that allow to do it automatically. Uh, so here, what we can do, we can from Lightning Node just uh, get two transactions uh, to this HTOC offers, uh, the incoming one and outgoing one, uh, check that the fees uh, are actually positive, so we will get some money, and then just uh, go with it. And then, ideally, uh, when we get the pre-image back, then we um, send it further, uh, and eventually all this uh, HTOC magic stuff doesn't even appear on the blockchain, we just uh, end up uh, with updated channel values that are uh, slightly larger in our end. So looks like a pretty robust technique. Nothing can go wrong. Uh, 
Uh, now remember that our hardware wallet is connected to the Lightning node, and this means that uh, it doesn't really know anything about the blockchain at all. Uh, so it is completely relying on the on our online host that can be compromised about the blockchain. And what uh, does it mean? Okay, so for opening channel, when we broadcast our funding transaction, uh, we can make sure that it is on the blockchain. We can just ask for the Merkle proof for the transaction that it actually exists uh, in the in the block in a certain block. Uh, and so we know that the channel was open. Uh, then if the channel is closed or not is a little bit more tricky question. Uh, because if the channel is closed mutually, then obviously another party was talking to us and we were signing this two of two multi-signature transaction and uh, eventually we know that, okay, it was probably closed. Uh, but uh, there is also another way, right? Uh, the other party can just broadcast the latest commitment transaction. Uh, yeah, this is the evil guy. Uh, so, he just broadcasts the commitment transaction and he's already uh, got into our uh, Lightning node. So, what happens, he just blocks all the information about the blockchain and doesn't tell us anything about that. Uh, this means that if he broadcasts this thing, then his funds will be uh, locked for a certain time. Basically, he waits for one day until he actually uh, gets his funds unlocked. Uh, and uh, then he starts his tricky, <coughs> dirty uh, action. Uh, so uh, what he does, uh, he tries to route the payment with this HTLC stuff to another node, uh, but we don't know that this channel is already closed. So we already have the closed channel, uh, and we definitely will not be able to broadcast any of these new commitment transactions. And we already can't punish the, uh, the, this remote node uh, for this uh, kind of broadcast in the old state, because it was already broadcasted like a day ago, so he already got his money. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and what happens in this case, uh, we don't know that uh, the channel is already closed. It was closed unilaterally. Uh, the payment kind of goes on. We uh, got the new commitment transactions, but uh, instead of gaining some fees, we actually sent all our money to the remote node and got nothing from here. Uh, that's kind of bad. Uh, and the simple way to solve this is actually to, for the hardware wallet to ask, continuously ask for the new blocks. Uh, so unfortunately, it adds a little bit complexity to the hardware device in general. Uh, because, uh, well, how can you be sure that you are getting the, uh, the blocks uh, all the time and that they are not delayed? Uh, the only way is is to compare to the timestamp in the block. So the blocks in the blockchain have a timestamp. Time uh, this timestamp is not 100% precise, so it has an error bar of uh, two hours, I think, or so. Uh, but still, comparing to this uh, one-day delay, it is pretty small. So uh, this means that you need to get the block headers. Uh, compare the time that you're actually getting all the blocks in there. You don't need to parse the whole block. That would be terrible. Like, uh, we try to make this hardware device as simple as possible, but uh, still, we need to parse at least the headers. We need to check that uh, the difficulty is right, the time timestamps time are right. Uh, and also, we need to uh, look for the... Um, commitment transactions for our channels, if the channels are still open or not. And as soon as we see that, um, eh? oh, yeah, here. Uh, as soon as we see that uh, either the blocks are delayed by more than a few hours, uh, or uh, if the channel actually was unilaterally closed there, uh, then uh, we can dis detect this kind of attack and actually stop that. Um, I think that I messed up with the sequence of the slides a bit. Uh, so in total, uh, comparing to the normal hardware wallets uh, that we have right now, uh, we need some changes. In particular, we need to parse more than just one, one simple transaction. We actually need to first parse uh, custom uh, scripts. 
uh, like this HTLC commitment transactions, multi-signature obviously, but multi-signature all the hardware wallets can do right now already. Uh, and also we need to be able to uh, parse pairs of transactions and make sure that uh, actually it is safe now to broadcast stuff. Uh, obviously parsing Lightning devices, so I think that it uh, may take a while to realize everything, but uh, it's not like super hard, it's not like rocket science. Uh, the hard, uh, a bit harder is the second part where you need actually some extra functionality of some hardware word. In particular, uh, you, need a, oops, you need a certain storage uh, to store all this database of the uh, latest state of the channels. Uh, and uh, this may be tricky. Uh, well, you still can use the node and uh, encrypt all this stuff uh, with, your, uh, with your secret key uh, and use it this way, but uh, it would be nice to have some kind of storage. In the you need to generate the pre-images and the revocation keys. Uh, and the important thing is that you still need to be able to parse blocks, at least uh, not like verify all the transactions there, but at least verify that the block headers are correct and uh, check that uh, there is no transaction uh, that is closed in the channel. Uh, so these are the important parts. Uh, but nothing looks like super, super scary, actually. Uh, so I think that uh, if uh, Trezor, Ledger, who else do we have? We uh, put some time and effort into uh, making the hardware wallet for Lightning, it will actually work. And ideally, it should be something like a, a simple USB dongle that you plug in into your uh, server or computer and it secures your key and doesn't expose them into the network and can kind of collect the fees for you. Um, do I have something else? Um, basically, I think that's it. So it took a little bit less time than I expected. Uh, sorry about that, but maybe you guys have uh, some questions about this. Yeah. Uh, please wait a minute, I will give you a microphone because as you know we are streaming and also recording so it will be maybe a problem, don't have your question recorded. So thank you once again Stepan. Now Thanks. we have plenty of time. Thank you. Uh, now we have plenty of time to discuss this topic a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So when anybody of you would like to ask, I will give you a microphone and you can say your question. So you're first. Hello, thank you for that, that was very interesting. Um, perhaps I missed it, are you writing your own software for a Lightning implementation, or would this require sort of a, a software change to existing Lightning implementations? Uh, so it requires a certain changes in the existing implementations. Currently we are wor working with the C Lightning, uh, because basically it is written in C, it is perfect to migrate or steal some parts of the codes uh, and move them to the, uh, to the microcontroller, uh, and uh, yeah, we just um, are pretty to much in touch with uh, Christian Decker, who helps us with that. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, right now, the existing implementation don't have a complete separation between the uh, kind of secret handling, let's say, process or part of the program and the, the rest of the thing. Uh, so uh, it is pretty simple to uh, separate the on-chain keys from the, um, from the Lightning nodes uh, to the separate device, but uh, all the per channel secrets, for instance, uh, they are used all over the places, and um, yeah, not so easy. And also in the database, and also pre images in the database. So basically, uh, we need to work together in that sense to separate everything a little bit nicer. Uh, another thing is uh, that even though, for instance, Sea Lightning has a daemon that's uh, supposed to work as a, uh, well, or be replaced afterwards with a hardware wallet, this HSMD, uh, it's um, doesn't have all the information that it needs. So for instance, when we are signing the funding transaction, as I said, uh, we need to make sure that we get the uh, commitment transaction, plus we need to make sure that we are signing the second public key uh, is owned by the other node. Uh, so everything like that is not really being passed to the uh, HSMD, only the necessary kind of, well, only 
the necessary for signing information is being sent. So there sh will be a certain refactor of this and maybe patch. So we don't want to use the, to write our own implementation because it will take forever. Uh, but we also don't want to put a full lightning node on the hardware device because, well, that will be crazy. Uh, so we need to hack everything together somehow, and as soon as it works, maybe we will put a bunch of uh, pull requests for every, implement every implementation. But currently we are focusing on C-Lightning. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, Kay. if no, really? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, then we have, I suppose, a 15-minute break. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Stepan. Once uh, again, please uh, thank Stepan for his speech. Thanks. And uh, you can.